In this lecture, we'll have a deep dive into the delivery configuration. We'll have a look at how it's configured. We'll have a look at all of the detailed configuration. And after that, we'll have a look at the business case and use our knowledge of the configuration and the process to build the business case. So, we'll have a look at the delivery types. We'll have a look at the item categories for the deliveries and how that works. We'll actually revisit the incomplete procedure and the delivery block. Now, we've already done this in the sales order, but it's good to refresh our knowledge, to reinforce our knowledge of these two items, because they, they represent an end-to-end -end flow of how these work. Okay, so we know that a particular document type represents, in effect, a process. So one particular document type will represent how a process works. So for example, if we look at the document type LF here on the start, LF, it represents an outbound delivery. And it's created usually with reference to a sales order. Hmm? Um, the, it's the most common used document. And every time you would create an LF document, it's always with reference to a sales order. A note a word here. If you are building a process for uh, the delivery, it's better to either reuse the standard pro document type, or if you have to change it, copy it and create a Z1. Next, we have the LO. Um, next is the LO document type which is where you create a delivery without reference to a sales order in SAP or to be more exact in the current SAP system and why would I say that? Why would you create a delivery that has no reference to a sales order or a purchase order? And Because as a business process you would want that. You would want the delivery to be from somewhere and the biggest reason you would do that is when the demand to create a delivery comes from an external system. So let's say your sales order or your purchase order or your stock transport order is created in another system, maybe another SAP system, maybe in a totally different legacy system, and rather than recreate that, let's say, that sales order back into the, the current SAP box, you just send, let's say, uh, an IDOC or a message to create that delivery on its own, in 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 that current system so it might be that the sales order is in an one system and the delivery is another and that is the reason why you would want to create a delivery without reference to anything next you have the document type lr which is used for returns now returns actually means that the, the stock actually increases but from an sap perspective it's still an outbound delivery and only the material movement type is causing the the, the, the increase in, in stock. From a process point of view, it's still handled and managed as an outbound, a type of outbound delivery. Then we have document type NL, which is a replenishment from a stock transport order. We have document type LP, which is from projects. We have LB, which is from the subcontracting process. And we'll have a look at that in a separate lecture, the subcontracting process. And it's from a purchase order. And finally, we have the inbound document type EL, which is an inbound delivery that represents the incoming materials from a purchase order. So as you can see, all of these document types represent a particular process. And my suggestion is to reuse these document types whenever possible and only copy and enhance if you ever want to change it. Never ever create a document type on your own from scratch. Always copy from something. So let's now have a look at the configuration for the delivery header. We'll look at all the items in that delivery uh, and we can see what each component of the configuration does. So let's start off as usual, SPRO. Let's go to the configuration. I go to the reference IMG as usual and I go to Logistics, execution, shipping, deliveries, 
define delivery types so this is all of them that's the one we want define delivery types and we, yep uh, we ha also have the define item categories here and we'll have a look at that in, in a, a bit later on but let's have a look at the define delivery types first and as you can see here is all the delivery header types the document types let's look at LF our favorite and let's, let's have a look at the details so you can see on the top here uh, this is the conf so here is the configuration um, and the first thing you see is you see the delivery type LF you see a description yeah so delivery or you can change it to outbound delivery however you want it you then have the document category um, that tells you what type of document is it so J is a standard delivery uh, H is a return for example so J H and you have others here as well but it, it's a category that has been used for reporting and it drives some of the configuration in the background so usually you'll see either H for returns or J for delivery yeah and as I said before if you ever wanted to create a new document type always copy so that you get the right document category we have the number usage to both internal and external that is just a number range we have also the uh, item uh, number how how many it jumps so 10 20 30 40 just like in the sales order and I would suggest you would just keep it the same as in the sales order so you have a one-to-one -one match and it's important to just repeat that a little bit when you have an item on the sales order and you copy it into the delivery the system actually redetermines the numbers that's why you want to keep it the same as the sales order if you have it different then in the sales order it might be item 10 and in the delivery it might be item 5 very confusing for everybody so keep it the same as a sales order and it'll be the same most of the other time for the order required we see the reference document that the delivery must be linked to in this case X is sales order required if you had nothing then it'll be the blank one also you have U which is purchase order R return delivery from vendor L subcontracting and so forth so here is where you drive the preceding document uh, of the delivery yeah and in most cases you will have create delivery with reference to something so that's where you configure it uh, the default order type that one is not so much used we can skip it the item requirements here is how you define if you create a new item on the delivery let's say a packaging material that you create that's not in a sales order or if you manually type a new item or for example if um, through material determination you have an extra item on the on the delivery how does the system behave in that way and the rule 202 for example tells you the behavior for the storage location rule and the delivery determination output determination you will all see that it's been grayed out this means that it's just uh, information only and you change the configuration oops you change the configuration somewhere else uh, so it's only here for information yeah uh, the storage location rule you will you will configure when you do your picking and as we saw before the root determination is actually in the root configuration so it's only information at the moment you can see here um, so don't worry because it's grayed out it's just configured somewhere else the delivery split by warehouse number uh, as you know the warehouse is determined by um, storage location and plant and you could have a you could have an issue where you have two storage locations which point to different plants and if you flag this you force the delivery to split which is the right thing to do and if you by default I leave it on so it's extra safe the delivery split for partners is to say if I have different partners like the freight forwarder or the ship to party then force a split now by default I don't do this I always leave it off um, and it forces the um, additional partners to be on item level makes life easier but if you do really need to split by additional partners this is where you would do it okay next we have uh, automatic packing oops let me close this first uh, oops so we then have rescheduling which says do I want to recalculate my deadlines and you have option X which is 
recalculate okay, if it's in the past, recalculate uh, if the routes have changed, um, and then reschedule after relevant changes. So when should you use this? It's important because each re recalculation has a little bit of performance impact. And I only turn this on if I have two options. Yeah, A, uh, if the business is normal, standard, they always create the delivery on time, you don't really need rescheduling because you know 99.9% .9 of the time the deliveries will be created on the right day and you'll have the right dates. If, for example, you always change the route and the routes have a longer and shorter lead time, then you would choose option Y. Just say recalculate, but only if the routes have changed. And option X um, is if you constantly create deliveries that are late. For example, export deliveries. Yeah, So you're not sure really when you want to ship it, for example. And you could say for a particular delivery type for export, always re reschedule because you know that you're always going to create the deliveries late um, you might as well recalculate it yeah so rule of thumb if you always create the delivery on time no need to reschedule if you change the route you can choose option Y if you always create the delivery late then choose option X for the automatic packing um, this means that when you create the delivery automatically run through the packing proposal and create um, the suggested packing. Now this goes obviously with the packing functionality and handling unit functionality which we will see later but just know that if you set this the system will turn on the packing proposal and you would do this if there's easy constant rules on how to pack something. If a particular delivery always requires a user to decide how to pack it then maybe you shouldn't use the automatic packing proposal. Again we'll have a look at this later on. The generate packing material item just says that if you do do the packing when you save the delivery take the items because they are materials that you use for the packaging and put it as a delivery item um, at the bottom. Okay so we'll have a look at this later uh, so let's have a look at the next config. The next is a screen sequence grouping that means just it says if I press tab uh, how does it jump from field to field? Um, the display range, I'm not sure myself. I always keep it at all items. So that is the configuration for the delivery header. So now let's have a look at the configuration on the item level. And if you go to SPRO, it's under the header Shipping, Deliveries, Define Item Categories. And the item categories you see here it's the same logic as in the sales order. Whatever item category is in the sales order, you would copy into the delivery, and that's the item category in the delivery. So let's have a look at the standard one that we've been looking at, TAN. Uh, so if I put TAN here, um, it has an item category, that's the standard one. So let's have a look in detail what it is. And the first thing we have is document category. Now by default, I always leave it as J, it's part of the delivery. Next we have the material number zero allowed. Now by default uh, what this means is you would allow um, where the material number is blank and you would flag it to say um, yes you would allow it or no you won't. By default I don't allow it uh, because you really want that consistency. If you allow the users to randomly in the material number to put anything they want, uh, it, it tends to be difficult both on the reporting side and maybe on the billing side. So what I always do is if there's a particular service that you want to allow them to use, then you would have a particular material number for service. Let's say packing, you would might have a specific material number that would appear on the invoice as packing. If you wanted to have free text uh, or you want to have notes that would appear on the delivery, I usually tell them to use the free text functionality rather than adding a new item line. But it depends on the business uh, as always in all of these things, but at least you know now when, what is the best practice of allowing uh, f uh, material numbers uh, or, or or not allowing items that don't have material numbers.
The item category statistic group is used for sys reporting. Also, you can use it for BW reporting. It just groups particular item uh, categories together. Um, so, for example, you could have return item categories as one group or another. You could have this is the stock determination rule. It's usually set by MM and it just says how you run down the material. Uh, do you use maybe a batch number? maybe FIFO, LIFO and so forth. It's it's better to allow MM to to populate this. I usually do. They just tell you how, how the material is to be run down by batch and so forth. Next is check quantity is zero. So when you create the delivery, what happens if the, the, the delivery quantity is zero? You have three options here. You can do nothing. You can just make a log of the problem. You can generate an error message in create or change mode and you create an error message only in create mode so it's up to you uh, maybe you would allow zero items depends on the business again check the minimum quantity it's the same logic uh, and check over delivery obviously when you do the post goods issue if the if you posting more than the material do you want to uh, make a note of it do you want to make an error and so forth by default I, I make a note of error Next we have availability check, whether you turn it on or off. Blank is you turn it on. So what this means is when you create the delivery, you either can say blank, check availability, X, don't do anything, or Y, um, do not check availability when reporting results of picking request. So the question is, when would you turn it on? When would you turn it off? Checking availability is quite resource intensive. So, if, for example, you you would turn it off if, A, you don't care whether you have material or not. This could be because you have a particular scenario called fill or kill, which means you don't really care. Uh, you will do that through the picking stage, for example, it could be a business case. Or you would always, if you don't have enough, manufacture enough for the customer. That's one. So in that case, you don't care about availability. The other reason um, uh, is that you run the ATP rescheduling and then immediately you create the delivery. Right? In that case, you could turn off ATP check when you create the delivery. And the reason is this. When you run the ATP rescheduling, you're actually doing an ATP check. And then immediately after that, you create the delivery. So why do the ATP check? ATP check twice. That's really the justification. Um, again, it depends on the business situation and what business you're in. Yeah. By default, I tend to leave the ATP check on, uh, and and I suggest you would do so unless there's a big performance issue. Yeah. Some sometimes businesses they want to create all the deliveries within a certain time or so forth, and maybe it takes too long. Maybe this time you might want to turn off ATP. Then we have the whether or not it's supposed to be packed, and you have three options. It can be packed, it must be packed, or it can never be packed. By default, I leave it blank so that I have the flexibility. In the future, I can say, yes, this material could be packed, and I don't have to go back and change the configuration.